Hi, my name's Keith Cooper, Northlight Images. This is an Epson P5300, um, a new printer from Epson. I'm going to have a look in this video at using this, the paper cassette. Now, this is something that is vastly superior to the sort of paper cassettes you get in small uh, desktop printers, small home office printers and the like. This is a hefty bit of kit and takes sheet sizes up to A2. Well, actually, it will take slightly above that. It will do 17 inch width. Um, it will take lots of paper. There are three paper paths uh, effectively uh, that, that I could use for this paper here. Well, I could use roll paper. I can put a sheet in at the top here, single sheet, or I can load a sheet from here, it goes through, comes back out. Now that is for thick media as well, so I could use that for poster board and the like, and I will be doing something looking at poster board and things. Thing to remember though is that it has paper has to go right the way through to come back through and be printed. That means you need a much bigger gap than I've got here at the back, or your board will just slam into the wall at the back. But about the paper cassette here, it's, um, so it's a hefty bit of kit. If I pull it out, you can see that I've got fairly large paper loaded. Now to load larger than A3, so this is A3 plus or 13 inch by 19, you need to extend part of the uh, cassette here. It's a little blue uh, put lever here. You just pull on that and you can extend the paper cassette and it changes the size. If I show that, you can see it coming out like that. You can set it at larger sizes as well. Now, you, if you've loaded up a photocopier, because this feels like a, the sort of hefty thing that you get in photocopiers and the like. There's um, a lever, here's a bar here that's pushed to that side and a bar here for that. Now, if you're going to leave paper in the cassette larger than A3, uh, there is an additional cover that comes that fits over this because when I push this back in, you'll see it extends out and that's somewhere where dust and the light could get in. So there is a plastic cover, comes with a printer um, that fits over this. Now the output tray is above this and that just comes out normally here. And it pulls out. And let's say the paper trays on this, I've got P5000, this is based on the P5000. So it's the chassis, paper handling, etc. of the P5000. The print head and ink system is the same as the P700, P900. So this one is aimed at less regular use perhaps than the P5000, which needs using a lot. This is still very heavy duty though. So this will just churn through prints, should be fine all day long just printing if you want it that way. Which is one of the reasons you might use the cassette here. Now, I've tried a few different papers in this and it seems okay with thickish photo papers, but that will be very dependent on the physical nature of the paper you're using. So the paper I'm using here, and there's a test print I made earlier, um, is a metallic gloss that's 270, remember rightly, no, 260 gram photo metallic gloss. This is an Olmec branded one. Uh, that's a UK brand, but you'll find similar papers. This is, a glossy photo paper. It does work with watercolour papers and lighter papers. If you want to start putting heavier art papers in it, I'm going to suggest you need to experiment and be prepared to accept it may not work. Because remember the sheet of paper, and you have to put your paper in upside down here. So I've got a sheet of A3 plus plain paper on the bottom because the printable side is facing down. I don't want that rubbing on the plastic here. So that's just a sheet of plain paper at the same size. So we've got the paper there. That paper has to come up. It has to be turned around and come back out of the printer. So how useful this is for thicker art papers really will depend on the physical characteristics of the paper itself. Now, I've loaded up the paper in here and I've also set it on the screen here. Now, for this particular paper, I'm using a premium glossy 250 media setting. Remember that papers may not be the same as they're marked here. If you have a profile for this paper, or if you make your profiles, and I'll, I'll be covering that in the longer written review, 
If you make your own profiles, you need to specify a media type. And the media type I've specified for this is Premium Glossy 250. Just happens to work fine with it. Similar sort of thickness paper. Remember, it's about thickness of paper, not necessarily grams, because the two are not always the same. But anyway, we've got this. It's got the paper in the right way around, so upside down. And roll paper, which I had here. This is some premium luster, and this is, um, this is a lighter paper. Well, it's slightly thicker, actually, um, but I believe it's a lighter weight paper. But anyway, it doesn't matter. The roll is unwound. I don't need to take the roll off when I'm doing this. It's rolled it back. I can load it again afterwards. But anyway, I've got paper, got everything here. Just gonna have a look at some of the settings that I'm using. I'm printing this from Photoshop, by the way. Uh, you could print perfectly well using Epson print layout. You could print for many applications. Um, I'm just showing this to show some of the general principles of it. This is Photoshop running on quite an oldish Mac. It's, in fact, it's CS6 it's running on and an oldish uh, MacBook Pro. So uh, I'm just going to go through to the settings. Now I've got the image loaded up. This is the standard printer output. I've selected my profile that I've created. Photoshop managing color, but I do need to go to the print settings to make sure that I've got the right print settings. Now I've saved these as a preset. Um, you can see it just says P5300, PGP250, CASC A3+. That just means it's the PGP250 media setting, which is what I set when I loaded the paper up. A3 plus for the size, high quality, because I'm printing this at the high quality setting. I don't need to go any higher quality than this. As you can see, all the settings are there, uh, settings, quality. I, you can change some of these things. Now, I've set this to A3 plus sheet maximum. One of the things there is that uh, the printer here, this printer does not print borderless on sheets. Now with maximum, I've reduced the size of the margins at the top and bottom to just a few millimeters. Ideally, if you can do it, if you use the, don't use the margins at their absolute smallest, you'll get a slightly larger margin on the bottom end, but the paper handling is slightly better. Now, I won't, you won't see any difference in quality with this particular media I'm using here. But anyway, I'm just going to press print because it's, as I said, a slowish laptop. It's going to take uh, for the image, it's quite a large image that I'm printing. I'm, shrinking the size. You do not need any special resolution settings for this. I'm printing it at whatever the native resolution is, and it's several hundred uh, pixels per inch, more than what you would think would be necessary. But I know that a printer like this produces better quality print slightly if you send more real re resolution to it. Um, I've got videos about that with other printers, and if you have a look at other stuff, you'll see what I've covered on it. And I'll put some links in the notes to this video as well. But anyway, I'm just waiting here for something to happen. There are the fans starting up, preparing. We'll get the usual whirring and things because I've not used the printer for an hour or so. And uh, it says printer is operating. There's a sheet being taken up from the feed here. I could hear the noise from here. And if I look, I should be able to see yeah, the print is coming through here. It's moving it backwards and forwards a few times, finding the leading edge, checking the width and various things. Yeah, printers do this sort of stuff. And ooh, it's print headers just moving across a few times. And hopefully it will start printing in a moment or two. There we go, it's printing. Now it says, seven minutes, six minutes now. So it's often a little bit below what it says on the indication there. So I would say that we will have a print coming out here in about five minutes. Now, since I don't want it tipping out onto the floor, I'll just pull the, that there a bit, put this little tab up that stops stuff sliding off. If the paper works physically feeding through, then there is no reason you can't just fill up here with sheets. Remember though that the smallest printable size on this I think is eight by 10. Um, I'm not sure of that. It may actually be a four or letter. You need to check the specs on that, but this does not support 
small sheet sizes. So don't think you're going to load this up with a big stack of 6x4 paper and run off loads of prints like that. If you want to print 6x4s on a printer like this, you print multiple ones on a roll, sheet, on a roll paper or on a sheet and then you need to trim it. And as I said, there is no borderless on sheet on this. I've done a video looking at borderless printing. Bo full borderless is available on roll because it prints edge to edge of the paper, but not end to end. So with roll paper, the image is printed and then it's trimmed off to get your borderless print. But for sheet printing here, yes, you can have it with smaller margins, uh, down to a few millimeters, but you cannot have borderless sheet. Not, not well. You can have borderless sheet from edge to edge like this, but not at either end. So, yeah, it depends what you, why you want borderless. Now, the print I'm doing here is an image I took years ago uh, on the Oregon coast. Um, this is a metallic paper. It's a metallic effect paper, so it has a slight colored sheen to it when the light reflects off it. It's an interesting paper. It has no optical brightness. Um, metallic papers um, can have issues sometimes with pigment ink printers like this, but looking at this on this particular one here, and this is a, te this is a standard test image I use, and another one of my own images that I use for evaluating uh, printer gamut, um, this one looks fine. There is no obvious gloss differential. You can see if I reflect light off it that you can see just about where the ink is laying on the paper, but you expect that with a pigment ink printer on glossy papers. So that one there, that looks okay. Um, that's, I say, that's a test print I did earlier, just went checking that all this stuff would actually work. Now this particular image here is one that was taken using a Canon 1DS, that's the first full frame camera uh, that was widely available, and it's 11 megapixels. You think, wow, 11 megapixels, is that pushing it for this size of print? No, it's not, because this particular image here uh, was uh, produced in an exhibition nearly 15, 20 years ago now, I produced a print of this at six foot by four foot, and it worked just fine. Um, and there we go. Um, I'll try not to get too much gloss reflection on it, but there is a print that is Haystack Rock at uh, Cape Coanda. And yeah, I mean, I know the image, obviously I've printed it many times. I use it as a test image, but uh, yeah, the colors are good. Um, Nice good colour from the sunset, nice good colour in the sky and the colours of the water. Uh, yeah, that works, but really what was I showing here was that rather than loading a single sheet at the back here, I could actually put sheets like this in the cassette. Now, the print will have gone through this way, so what I really want to check is what this leading edge feels like. Now, I can, if I run my finger along it, I can feel a slight bit of roughness on it. Now that will be caused, there are no marks on the print whatsoever, but that will be caused by the pickup rollers at the back. And that's why I say that getting paper to work in this is very much dependent on the physical properties of the paper. A softer, thicker paper might show more marks along the edge. Now I can only really just feel this if I run my finger along it, so it must be very slight but it is there and it's something you should consider before just buying box loads of paper to load up into a printer like this. So there we have it. Um, you know, test print, print of an image, works very well using the cassette. Do remember though that if you're gonna have the cassette open wider to put that plastic cover off over to keep dust out of the printer because you don't want dust getting into the print feed, the paper feed mechanism that could cause issues. If you've got any questions, please let me know. I'm going to have loads of these little videos covering different aspects of using this printer and a, a much more detailed review at some point. And also comparison, because several people have started asking me. P900, 17 inch printer, much smaller, much lighter. P5000, exactly the same looking as at this, but with more inks, slightly different, but needs more regular use, or P5300. It's an interesting choice 
and there is no obvious answer to it. Um, each of them has their uses. Now, I'll be coming back to that uh, once I've done more testing, more printing. But uh, yeah, an interesting printer. Nice prints. Thanks for watching.